look over not just what we can see here today, but over other projects, let's say, that you've done in your career. And that kind of is a little bit of a theme, it's vanishing cultures almost. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, ex I'm really, really interested in changing cultures. I like capturing people, environmental portraiture, and I particularly enjoy going to cultures that are changing and where dramatic change has taken place. Mm. Um, and it's something that I'm, you know, it just, it adds to the interest of the photography that I know the backstories to the individuals, their culture, their environment, yeah. what's changing, what's evolving, and to capture those people before that culture changes forever. Yeah. So I see it as a kind of a historical documentary of their particular environment and the people that are being forced to change. And it's, it's forcing change, I suppose, is, is what attracts me to the, those locations, be it Ethiopia, Burma, or whatever. Absolutely, because it's not just Ireland. I mean, you're looking at these, these characters that existed in the 70s in Ireland, and you're not going to find them in modern society here, to be honest. You know, they're, they're a lot different. Um, and then you put yourself in different locations around the world, and you seem to find almost similar characters with such expressive, you know, portraits. But how do you do that? How do you pick and choose where to go next? It self-selects. Um, it's very evident where change has taken place. Um, I suppose you could say I'm a traveller interested in photography. Yeah. Um, you know, I just love travel. And I like to travel to locations that are remote, that are pretty off the beaten track, really, in yeah. many respects. That is not the normal destination for tourists and so on, and um, and that's I'm attracted to those type of locations. And invariably, you'll find people such as the characters you see around yeah. here in those locations. So the two of them gel quite quite well yeah. for me. So tell us a bit then about the planning that goes into the trips that you take, because I mean I've read the stories. I know that um, they are completely remote locations that you are sleeping in a sleeping bag, looking up at the stars, all this kind yes, of thing. Yes. So what happens um, to get you to that location? Uh, do you make contact with these people first, or do you just go and explore? No, I go and explore. It's a little bit of serendipity, I suppose. Yeah. Once I've established a particular location. I find then, you know, the area that probably is of greatest interest to me once I get to that country and then I travel to it and I take it as it comes. Wow, okay. I tend to, I tend to be a little bit extreme in some of the ways I approach these things, but, you know, it's, it's, it's what adds to the mystique and to the interest of that. You must be very confident then as well to just kind of yeah, present yeah. yourself to a tribe of people who, who, who've never met an Irishman before and, you know, all of a sudden you're there face yeah. to face. Well, you know, people are fundamentally the same all over the world, no right. matter where you go. Uh, I've yet, touch wood, to come across anything that was dangerous or anything like that. I've been lucky. Um, no, I don't have difficulties. You know, I, I take it as it comes, as I say, and, uh, you know, so far it's all worked out for me. Yeah, you must have encountered some really different cultures than our own. I mean, does, does that change the way you photograph someone if you're listening to their stories or you see their, their habits first? It does, but my photography is all based on trust. Okay. Um, the type of photography, I, 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 don't, I don't believe in putting a long lens on a camera and hiding behind some kind of um, an obstacle and photograph people in a, in, in a, in a surreptitious way. Um, I prefer to engage with the individual, mm. build up a trust, build up eye contact, and because to me, capturing a portrait is through the person's eyes, yeah. and if I don't get the character of the individual, you know, reflected through their eyes, then it's a failed portrait. I mean, so it's I pretty much engage with the individuals. Absolutely, I mean that's really prevalent. I feel in your work that eye contact is is yeah. there throughout yeah. the whole thing. And it's my style. I could be reading the story of. of you know, someone that you've taken a portrait of, whether it be their tribe or them personally, and it could be a really horrific story, but yet you house, you somehow make them smile, <laughs> you know? So that I guess it is, that trust comes through then in your photographs, absolutely. Yeah, uh, I suppose, you know, people, people establish a relationship very quickly. It doesn't need an awful lot of time to, to establish a relationship with the person that you're taking photographs of. 
And if I believe that the rapport isn't there, if I don't think I've established that contact, that that mm. uh, that um, essential ingredient for a good portrait, then I won't take the shot. Right. No point because you know it can't be contrived. Yeah. From my perspective, it has to be it has to be natural. It has to be evocative and if it's any way contrived I'm, I'm not interested in it. So you almost have a level of quality control before you even press Absolutely. the shutter. So your editing process starts beforehand. I suppose it goes right back to the to these kind of images when they were taking you do everything in camera. Yeah. I don't know no. anything about Photoshop. Okay. I don't use Photoshop. Um, it's I do it in camera and if I don't get the shot in camera then you know, then you don't get I'm the not, shot. I don't get the shot. That's yeah. fantastic. So, I mean, your technique must have changed quite differently from like 1971 when these pictures were taken and you were doing everything in camera, as you say, yes. because of course it was on film. Mm. Um, have you migrated to digital? Yes, know? yeah, oh, yes. Um, I use Nikon equipment. I've got a D800 with a D700 backup. Right. And um, for me, you know, it was a natural transition from digi from film to digital. Mm -hmm. Now, I love the darkroom and I love everything about film. Yeah. However, the advantage of digital is just fantastic. I mean, yeah. you, you know you know what you're doing as opposed to, and what you're getting as opposed to, you know, waiting for the... Pro and, and if you're in remote locations, the prospect of processing film on the move is just not an option. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, rather than run the risk, I prefer to deal with digital. And so tell me, I mean, a lot of these pictures that you're taking of people who, you know, are essentially strangers that you've just met, mm -hmm. you're saying that you don't use a long lens. I mean, I probably would hide behind a long lens and just <laughs> zoom in rather than bring myself closer to the person. So what lens would you be using? Probably the lens I use most is 24-70, yeah. 2.8. Gorgeous lens. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a great lens and um, it's it's just the right the right end of telephoto to remove yourself without being in somebody's face but at the same time not yeah. to be hiding as you say when you're taking the shot. Brilliant. Um, again to bring it back to just, and I hate to dwell on this, but you have just a, a great way of telling stories, not only with the image, but with the backstories that you present on your on your website and, and as part of the show as well. I mean, how does that fit in with you with the, with the photographs? I suppose in many respects, um, the, my, my primary love is that of photojournalism. It's not just photography, I also like writing. Mm. And I like the backstories behind it. It just adds a new dimension to the individual photographs that I take. If I get a backstory to the individual, but it's in understanding the backstory to that person, can you build up the trust and really be, because you're finding out about the individual before you ever take the photograph. Mm. And as a consequence, by the time you come to take the photograph, you've established a rapport. Yeah. And um, yeah, no, but the backstories are an important ingredient in oh, my yeah, work. Oh yeah, I think so. I mean, it gives you kind of a fuller dimension of the, of the person. I hope so. This is Ruth Mejber for Adorama TV. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest online for your chance to win some amazing prizes. What I find really fascinating about one picture is, I think her name is Maul. Yes. The, the lady with the hat. Yes. How do you make contact with someone? Because maybe you could explain a bit about her first. Well, I suppose we have to go back to the story of the milk market. It was established, it was, it was built in 1852. Moll's mother was born just as the milk market opened. And that was a time when Ireland had a famine and a million people lost their lives and a further million people emigrated. So when I was taking a photograph of Moll, she was in her late 80s, mm. nearly 90 years of age. And I just couldn't understand. I was only about 20 at the time. I couldn't understand the link between that lady and our historical past. Yeah. So for me, she represented a very dramatic period in Irish history. She lived a very Spartan life on the outskirts of Limerick. And when I took her photograph, she was the last member of her family line. Wow. So once she died, that, that was, was it. it. There were no cousins, no relatives. She was close on 100 years of age, and just wow. eight people attended her funeral, just sufficient wow. to carry the coffin. So that one photograph, for me, 
is just a story of adversity, of hardship, that went right through from famine times in Ireland through to a period when Ireland was at the cusp of change in the 70s. Mm. And she spanned that period. So for me, she represents a vanishing Ireland. I thought that she was the image I wanted then to use as a backdrop to the exhibition and to the book. Yeah. Um, ultimately, it's a case of keeping her name and her story alive. Yeah, which you are doing quite strongly. So, I mean, Hopefully I know so. about them all now, and yeah, everyone well, else does. So, I mean, the, uh, the, when the exhibition hung in the uh, Hunt Museum in Limerick last year, um, we had a big banner draping the building of mm -hmm. Mall, and that was, it was really, I felt good about that because yeah. I, I thought, you know, I'm going to keep this woman's story alive, you know. But a lot of what you do, you're, you're documenting all these things that are going on. It, it must yeah. make you feel good about it because you're representing people that otherwise wouldn't have a voice. Well, it's given me a different dimension to just photography. Mm. I mean, you know, there's information, the, the, look, the, the image overload, yeah. I suppose, yeah. is what we're all accustomed to now and I just want to have a differentiation and that's why the backstories are so important to me because it completes the story of the person not just